So, so many people out there I find know a little bit of Excel VBA. They've recorded something in the macro recorder. They've had a little bit of success, managed to automate something, but that's where it ends. And what I find is with just a little bit of VBA, with just a little bit of VBA, it could take you to the next level. In this video, I'm sharing 25, 25 non-recordable Excel VBA constructs, 25 powerful VBA constructs that could just bind everything together, could be that connective tissue between the bits of VBA that you've got working. So hang around, we're going to go through them in the next 15 minutes or so. And as always, you can download the download file and work along with me. But this is the Friday spreadsheet huddle. Remember, there's two, two rules of the Friday spreadsheet huddle, which is the first rule is no one talks about the Friday spreadsheet huddle. The only way to know the huddle is happening is to subscribe to us on YouTube and to turn on your notifications. We've got some basic information about the huddle here. So it's your chance to put uh, some questions to me. Um, so I'll be live after the session for 15 or 20 minutes, 30, 45 minutes, and you're very welcome to hang around and get into the huddle. We can talk about anything to do uh, with Excel, and the link is in the video description below. So you just got to wait there until the video is done. This is a private session. It's not going out on YouTube, so we can talk privately about anything Excel related. With that said, we're trying to do 55 five zero videos this year. Um, I can tick off the second one for this year. Let's go ahead and do that right now. And then over here, we're going to tick, tick off the subs as we move towards uh, 100,000. And remember, the only way to know about the uh, Friday spreadsheet huddle is to be subscribed to the channel. So hit the sub subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Apologies for that. Put my mic back on. Ah, okay. Right, I'm just going to hold my mic. Anyway, um, so turn on your notifications and you will hear about the Friday spreadsheet huddle. Right, let's get into uh, this one. Just going to hold my mic and we are going to jump into the download file here. So make sure uh, you download the download file and work along with me and let's get into this one. So if you don't know how to set up the Excel VBA editor, I've got links in the video description below for our follow-up videos. We've got absolute beginner videos there that will show you how to set up your system for Excel VBA. It's dead easy, but there's a few things that are going to really help. It really helps to be able to see the VBA editor and Excel at the same time. Multiple screens helps, but as you can see, I'm doing this uh, on a single screen today. So We've got 25 macros. These are lined up here where it says sub. That's the beginning of a macro where it says end sub. That's the end of end of a macro. I'm just going to click into the macros and hit the play button today. Also use the F5 key uh, on the Windows PC, and that's going to allow us to run the macro. So we've got message box here. Check out the links below. Yes, all our Excel VBA beginner links are below. You can get into those videos, highly recommended. Why do we do message box first? Message box allows us to understand what the VBA editor is thinking, if that makes sense. That's why it's so important. We use uh, the message box to externalize stuff in the VBA editor's memory, and it's so important for testing for that reason. Right, let's select a cell. So I've clicked into our second macro here, gonna hit play. And it's going to allow us to select a cell in Excel VBA. Dead simple. And yeah, you would be able to record that. What you've got to remember to do now is do some play. So I've gone over to A2. What if I go over to D2 here? Just going to hit play and we are playing. It's trial and error. If you can get into that mindset where you're trying, guessing what's going to happen and then seeing and learning in that way, the sky is the limit for your Excel VBA. So we can select a single cell. What about selecting multiple cells? Well, we've got the syntax right here. Remember, you can download this file, work along with me. I'm just going to hit play, and I can see uh, we've selected C4 to H4. So all of all those headers have been selected. Once again, try playing with these references. Just get to know. Excel VBA, it's a skill. If you don't practice, you're not going to get any better. If you practice, you're going to get better very quickly. So we can select cells. What about putting a value into a cell? I call this the A equals B con construct. A equals B construct, where A 
So the first part of our construct is going to take on the value of B. So what we're expecting to happen is in cell C2, we're expecting this text to appear. And just take a second to notice, uh, we've got these speech marks around this text. That means we should have the text appearing in this cell because the VB editor is going to treat it as a text string. So we can see it appearing in C2 there. We've got dog walking logs. And once again, try some different text here. And go ahead, experiment with different things. I had caps lock on and go ahead, experiment. That is the way to get to know our 25 powerful Excel VBA techniques. Okay, so referencing cells, there's a different way. There's a different way to reference cells. I recommend getting to know dot cells. Why is that? What's so good about dot cells or the cells technique is we can refer to columns using a number. So this second number is going to be the column number. And that's useful for any number of reasons. Uh, we can easily substitute a variable in there. We could add numbers up to help us achieve some position control. So cells opens up a world of possibility for us. So uh, what cell are we going to select? You could pause the video and guess, going to hit play here. And we've selected cell B2. So what's going to happen if I go two, four here? Well, the first number is the number of rows down, and the second number is the number of columns across. So I'm guessing D2. D2, we're going to select, and I can see we've selected it there. Okay, let's count some objects. So what's an object in Excel, Excel VBA? So anything you can see on the screen really is an object. A sheet is an object. A file is an object. A cell is an object. A chart or a button. And all of these objects are kind of indexed in VBA's memory. And we can use um, the collections of objects to get cool stuff done. So for example, we can count the number of rows. So I've used message box and then rows.count. This is the number of rows. There's over a million rows in an Excel spreadsheet. How cool is that? Say you wanted to count the number of columns. Let's go ahead and do that. How many columns in an Excel spreadsheet? Is it 16,000? 16,384. That's why they came in small box. What can I say? Because I can memorize facts like that. 16,384 columns in Excel. What else could we do? Could we say sheets.count? Is that going to work? Is this going to count the number of sheets in the file? Let's go ahead and hit play. And I can see there's one sheet in my file here. So just a quick introduction there to working with objects in Excel. Right, Excel VBA, selecting the last row in Excel. Why is this interesting to us? Well, we're moving towards what we call dynamic position control. Dynamic position, position control. Why is that cool? Because data sets, they're often changing in Excel. I very rarely have the luxury of working with a static data set, a data set that doesn't change. So we need VBA that's going to respond to that situation. It's going to work with a data set that has more rows or fewer rows. What's going to happen here? So we've got the cells technique. And then inside the brackets, we've said rows.count. So we're going to select the last row in Excel there, combining two of the previous techniques together using cells and then counting the rows. This is the thing of beauty. When we start combining these techniques together very quickly, we get on that exponential curve and we start doing some really cool things, have some cool punch there moments. So selecting the last row, this is going to allow us to select the last column in Excel. So let's play that. And we can see column XFD. I'm just going to go ahead, type in the column formula here. We can see once again, 16,384 columns in Excel. So yeah, if you didn't learn anything from this video, you now know what 16,000 columns and what was it, over a million rows in a normal uh, Excel spreadsheet. Right. Selecting to the bottom. Now it's really getting interesting. So this syntax here ends and then in brackets, Excel down. We've also got Excel to write. And these are the two I use most often because they take us to the bottom of a data set or all the way over to the right hand side of a data set. Once again, these are dynamic. So these are going to change. If you've got more rows, you're going to get a higher number. You get the idea. So if I play this, what's going to happen? We're going to select the end of the data set. And if I play this one, what's going to happen? We're going to select the cell on the right of the data set. Once again, if you remove columns or add columns, you're going to go all the way to the end. So this kind of syntax facilitates our dynamic position control. And don't forget, guys, follow up videos. Follow up videos in the video description below. We've got our million view beginner Excel video from about 10 years ago. We've got uh, Learn Excel in an hour, Learn Excel VBA in an hour. 
Learn Excel VBA in 10 minutes, Learn Excel VBA in 15 hours, however you want to learn it. We've got a good option for you in the video description below. So make sure you check those out. Right, range, range, range. We understand how to select a single cell. Range, range, range allows us to select a range of cells, and then we can possibly incorporate some dynamic quality into, and then things start getting really interesting. So what's going to happen here? Just pause the video and try to think about this one. So C4 and H61. So with range, 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 the first reference here is the start of the range we're going to select. The second reference is the end of the range we're going to select. So I'm going to go ahead, click in the macro, hit the play button, we can see. We've got our whole data set, data set uh, selected here. So let's suppose we just wanted to select column C. What's going to happen now? And I can see just column C selected. Could we do something cool? So could we grab this piece of syntax? So we're going to combine two pieces of syntax together. Let's see what's going to happen here. So C4 and then to the end of the contiguous data range. That word contiguous means there's no gap. So go to the end of the data and keep going until you find an empty column. We can hit play here. And once again, we've managed to select all of the columns in the data set. So you've got to do that, guys. Got to start playing uh, with these constructs, combining them together. Seriously, very soon you're going to get lost. You're going to get on the exponential learning curve and you're going to be transforming your Excel VBA skills. And somebody maybe who does a bit with the macro recorder to somebody who can genuinely create what I'd call, you know, transformational VBA applications. That's what I'm doing every day. That's what our company's doing every day. VBA applications that are saving, saving organizations hundreds, thousands of hours, possibly more. Right, let's get into if statements. We're going to cover uh, if statements and loops in the next couple of minutes. So now we're moving into more advanced VBA. An if statement is going to do something if a condition is met. So if the value in the active cell is more than 80, we're going to flash up a message box. If the value in the uh, active cell is less than 80, what's going to happen? Well, because the condition isn't met, nothing's going to happen. OK, so simple conditional statement. If we need more conditions, so in the previous example, we were choosing between two conditions, more or less than 80. What if you had more than one condition? Say we wanted to do different things according to um, which which dog name it is on a particular row. Then we can use select case. Select case is what I recommend. You can see we're going to go into the piece of code that corresponds to the particular dog name that is in the cell. Although this this one didn't seem to work too well. Case ah this was ah there we go. Okay, so I haven't got around to changing this. So I need to change this text. So if I say Luna here and then hit play, I can see. Yeah, so the uh, VBA editor is going to go only to the piece of code that's below the particular case that applies. In this case, we're talking about a value in a cell. Offset, move away from. That's all the offset means. Yeah, don't worry too much about why it's important. Yeah, we're going to see in just a second. Hit the play button here. So we started at C4 and we offset it. We moved away by one row and zero columns. This time, we're going to start on C4, and we're going to move away by three rows and three columns. So what um, cell are we going to end up on? One, two, three, one, two, three. I think we're going to end up on F7. Going to hit play here, and you can see, yes, F7 there. Now, offset, moving away from a particular cell in the spreadsheet gets interesting when we combine it with a loop. We're going to see in just a second. Right. Variables. Let's hit play we can see three popping up here. So this is A equals A plus one con construct. It's just incrementing up the value of a variable. Once again, um, play with this code, do some experimentation, get to know variables at least a little bit. So we're going to move into loops now. So for each, remember we spoke about objects. We've got cells, we've got spreadsheets, we've got charts. So we can say to Excel, do something to each object in a collection. In this case, we're going to say do something to each cell in the range C4 to H4. I'm going to hit play. And I can see those headers, walk code, dog's name, day, day, walk, start time. They're going to pop up as we go through that loop. That's a for each loop. Do until, do until loop. 
I'd say not absolutely necessary during tilt, but gives us some really nice flexibility to do more advanced stuff. And here, we've combined this with offset. I'm not going to go into this now, but you can see the basic idea here. We're doing the same thing and we're going to stop when we get to a blank cell. So this one more dynamic. This one would respond to more columns being added. What else have we got? So count if, got three examples of count if here. I'm just going to look at VLOOKUP here. Sorry, not count if, we've got three examples of worksheet function here. I'm just going to look at uh, VLOOKUP here. So we can access pretty much any worksheet formula we can access from the VBA editor without having to have a formula in the spreadsheet at all. So you can see I'm looking up walk 001, the value in this row here. You can see you have to write out the formula. You have to write out the formula using VBA syntax in the VBA editor, an incredibly powerful option here in string is going to tell us if a particular letter or a particular word appears in a text string. What about, what about formatting the date and time? So how often have you wanted to do this in VBA, wanting to put the current date or time in? This is the way to do it using the format function. And you can change. You can change the specific formulation you have here. You could have uh, the day, the month, whatever you wanted here. What about base special formats? So let's suppose you wanted to change the formats here when I'm changing the formats of a cell often use pay special formats. I have what's called a format store, a format store. So I have the format stored elsewhere in the file. And finally, concatenating variables, bringing those variables together. We're just going to go ahead and hit play here. And you can see we've used the and sign down in the VBA editor to bring two variables together and to display them in a message box. So just a very quick tour, 25 non-recordable, most of them anyway, non-recordable VBA concepts. If you're one of those professionals, I've met so many who can do a little bit of VBA. This is that connective tissue. This is what you need to take you to the next level. Make sure you download the file, have a play, give your skills a boost today. And remember, we've got our best beginner uh, VBA video videos in the video description. We're going to go into the Excel huddle now. Thanks so much for watching. The next video to watch is on the screen. I'll see you there.